seven seconds and Ventina Spirit leads them up the back stretch. The Bob Pepper Trainee is three quarters of a length in front. Swoop and Sandwich on the outside second. Mandaloon drafts in right behind the front runners, third on the inside. Then it's Helium in fourth. Hot Rod Charlie behind them with Central Quality begins to move on the far outside as they make their way around the far turn. Medina Spirit is still the leader here. And Mandaloon comes on the scene on the outside, a half length behind. And Central Quality is put to pressure. Hot Rod Charlie right in behind the leaders. Flavian Pratt asking him to go now as they make their way to the top of the stretch. Medina Spirit and Mandaloon are stride for stride. Hot Rod Charlie and a Central Quality closing on the outside. The four of them come into the final furlong. Mandaloon fighting for the front. Medina Spirit battles on. Hot Rod Charlie on the outside. And Central Quality on the far outside. The four of them coming to the finish in the Kentucky Derby. Here's the wire. Bob Maverick does it again. Medina Spirit has won the Kentucky Derby. Mandaloon was second. Hot Rod Charlie was third. And Central Quality was fourth. 2102 the final time. Bob Maverick stands alone with seven Derby wins. Wow, Bob Baffert with seven Derby wins. Wayne Bolden here at the Speed King Channel. We just recapped the Derby. And we wanted to uh, recap all the 19 horses that run. And it was overall, it was a really good Derby. We wanted to recap it. And uh, we're going to go horse by horse here, take a few minutes and see exactly what we learned and what did we take away from this Derby. And obviously, speed is king. You know, uh, Bob do, do what he do. He put him on the lead, and that's the end of that story. Same trainer, same jock, same running style. Go to the front, as Authentic did last year, and um, bottom him out. But there was some things that had to unfold for that to really manifest. Um, the first thing that really... Uh, shaped the race was the break. As always, you know, you hear me say, uh, break clean, stay in your lane, right? In other words, they'll be crashing into each other. And they did, of course. So the two favorites from the 14 and 15 hole, Essential Quality and Rock Your World, they took themselves out right away. I mean, they just crashed right into each other, right? Which basically, when you miss the break like that, you're giving the race away in terms of you winning it. So... You know, Rock Your World and Essential Quality really lost the race at the gate. Um, I mean, they just crashed right into each other. And the other thing uh, that I seen from the break, uh, Midnight Bourbon was a step, step and a half off, and he got pinched a little bit. So there was three of them right there that had trouble coming out of the gate. So the gate opened, obviously Medina Spirit uh, popped right out. Uh, soups and sandwiches went out there, uh, motoring around the, the, the racetrack. And, of course, uh, Mandalu was sitting in a golden spot, sitting down on a rail, third or fourth, tracking Medina Spirit. And uh, it was a very, very uh, telling race from there. Um, the only other thing I've noticed on the rail, uh, he had a great, great trip, but he didn't have anything at the end. Um, uh, sainthood. Yeah, the number five horse was sitting there in the fifth or sixth spot. Uh, all things given, you know, he just didn't have anything when the running started. And of course, Helium was up front, uh, up close as well. The number one horse will run right down. Never got into the race. Uh, known agenda down on the rail. Uh, didn't have a, had a pretty decent break. Like the king, really, the number two horse didn't really show any interest in the race. And the number three is far back. He was up close and then far back, Brooklyn Strong. The one takeaway that I will tell you, I watched each horse. I run rerun this about 20 times. And I watched each, each horse, how they run around the track. And the one takeaway that I will tell you, the two horses that really impressed me, and you can go watch it for yourself. The number four horse, keep me in mind. David Cohen, um, I had a little trouble out the gate, but not much. He's not an early runner, and he was dead last. He was 19. Uh, did save a lot of ground, dead last down the back stretch. Start picking horses up, was three or four wide, uh, got to the top of the lane and swung out five wide. 
Now, I measured where Midnight Bourbon was, which was about 9th or 10th, and Keep Me In Mind was dead last. Uh, those two horses really were the ones that I say came out of this race with very, very wide trips and probably from a figure standpoint ran better races than uh, their finishing position would indicate. When you get a chance, go back and watch the number four horse, uh, keep me in mind. Dead lads start picking horses off down the back stretch. At the top of the lane, this horse has to be eight or nine wide. I know when Mike Smith swung out Midnight Bourbon, who was wide in the first turn, in the second turn, and the entire race, five or six wide the whole race. I tell you this, uh, keep me in mind, swung seven to eight wide. I know that uh, Midnight Bourbon had four or five limps on him, and he caught up with him right at the wire, and when they went by the wire, keep me in mind, was in front of uh, Midnight Bourbon. And one of the things that I watch all the time, I learned this from John Forbes, a trainer here at Monmouth Park, I always watch the run out after the race. It's a very, very important part of racing. And the run out, <laughs> keep me in mind, was third around the far turn after the race was over. And of course, you know, Mandalu and Midnight Spirit, uh, Medina Spirit was one too. So the run out, for these horses, uh, keep me in mind, was the best of them all. So that is a big takeaway. The biggest thing I took away was the wide trip, uh, the miss break, obviously, by Midnight Bourbon, my pick. And, um, uh, I mean, I was really impressed with keep me in mind. So we'll probably hear more from him later, uh, as long as there's a pace in front of him. The number five horse I talked about briefly, St. Hood, was down on the rail, uh, was in perfect position. He was fifth or sixth, uh, you know, at the quarter and a half mile pole. Just didn't have anything. I was really looking to bet St. Hood in a future race just off his speed figure. I wanted him to X here, and I think he did that. So I'm going to uh, look to bet St. Hood down, uh, down the road. Obeso ran really, really well. Finished uh, fifth, I believe, right behind EQ, Essential Quality. So uh, Basil did well. Mandalou ran his eyeballs out, obviously, setting a golden spot. And the winner, Medina Spirit. Again, Bob Baffert with his seventh uh, victory, back-to-back, -back, authentic, and um, Medina Spirit. John Velez Velasquez, same tactics, get to the front, bottom them out, you know. Um, and Hot Rod Charlie, yeah, I mean, I didn't think he could win the race. I thought you could use him underneath, but he ran a tremendous race, HRC. Hot Rod Charlie ran a tremendous race and, you know, uh, for running third there. So, um, good for him and Doug O'Neill and, and Flavian. And, of course, we talked about my pick, Midnight Bourbon. And, of course, you know, I like Mandalu a little bit. Uh, my friend Nate made a bunch of money on Mandalu, so that was nice. Um, Midnight Bourbon missed the break, uh, was wide on both turns down the back stretch, ended up finishing six in the race. So uh, we'll hear from him uh, soon. Dynamic One really had nothing. Uh, Helium was up close early, had nothing to give. Hidden Stash came out of the race, according to uh, Vicky, very well, but didn't have anything. It was empty, nothing. Uh, and Essential Quality, obviously. Uh, doing bumper cards with Rock Your World out of the 14 and 15 hole uh, was draped wide the whole um, the length of the stretch, 5, 6 wide into the turn, uh, but finished up real nicely. So, you know, you can't be mad. His numbers are probably better than uh, Medina Spirits and probably even um, uh, Mandalu you know, because of the ground that he lost and he had to travel further. So I'll be interested in the look at his speed figure, uh, essential quality. I bet you his number is probably better than the winners. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised either if Midnight uh, Bourbon's number isn't is equally as good. Because that horse was six or seven wide, both, both, both tracks, well, both uh, turns uh, as well. 
and of course, um, highly motivated, was up early uh, towards the front and then eventually faded from the 17 hole. We heard nothing from Super Stock and of course Supers and Sandwiches was got up there a little bit with uh, Mark Cassidy and Tyler Gaffney on. And we heard nothing from Bavani. So, what did we learn? We learned this. The break is everything in the Derby, right? So the two favorites, the favorite and the co-favorite crashed into each other. I mean, dumb luck. They just happened to be next to each other and they crashed into each other. Bob Baffert, smart. John Velasquez, squat, smart. Put them on the lead. Play that game. And um, Mandalu ran a tremendous race, as well as HRC. Hot Rod Charlie ran a good race. So, overall, very good derby. We don't have fills of 19 and 20 in America. The break is everything. And apparently, you know, like all races in America, you want to be forwardly placed. And Bob Baffert figured this out. Nobody went up there to challenge these horses, and they ran one, two around the race course. You know, so that being said, I had a great. Great time watching the race. I keep watching it over and over again because I always like to go back and, and reminisce and, and look at uh, all these derby races. Uh, it's a bunch of fun. And uh, that's my recap. That's my review. What is the takeaway? I think the horse that ran the best race in the race, obviously outside the winner in the second and third place finisher, is Keep Me In Mind. Go watch Keep Me In Mind. You'll see what I mean by that. He ran a tremendous race, as well as I think Midnight Bourbon was wide all the way around the track. And, uh, you know, again, it'll be interesting to see what the numbers are. So, once again, there's the recap. I hope you folks had a great time. I hope you all made some money. I did quite well yesterday, of course. You know I love Jackie Warrior in the eighth race in the Pat Day's Mile. That was my best bet of the weekend. We bet $400. The sponsorship group bet 2000 straight up, so we had a real good time. We enjoyed it, and here's the stretch run of the Kentucky Derby. Oh, One more time. Bob Baffert. Stay classy in all you do. Ring the bell, folks. Wayne Bolden, ring the bell. Subscribe. Stay classy. Talk to you next week. There it is. So I'm finished. I'm just draining the videos out. Let me see if the algorithm will pick it up. Oh, you want a shot? Where you going? Yeah, for a little bit.